Okay, so I, I made this video before, but frankly, it sucked. My sound quality was so bad, I almost deleted it. But I see a lot of people watched it anyway, so I guess I'm going to leave it up. But let me try to make a, a better attempt at this, if you don't mind, and I appreciate you staying with me on it. Um, so finding the derivative... <laughs> finding the derivative by the limit process... Look, we're going to be finding the slope of functions, and frankly, it, it gets easier, but first we have to kind of prove why it works and, and kind of how it works. So this is just a definition, and this is just the kind of the nuts and bolts of it, but <clears throat> the definition of the derivative is that the limit as the change of x approaches 0 uh, of change of y over change of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of this mess right here. And this just kind of quantifies this a little bit more and gives it some more description that it's the slope of the, when we talk about slope, when we talk about derivatives, we're talking about the slope of the line tangent to the curve at the point that we're interested in. So that's what these, this C value is. So I just took 50 seconds to, to talk about that mess. Let's get down to it. I'm going to try to do two examples here. One of them should be a really easy example, but I just want to show you how it would work. So I'm suggesting to you, uh, let's find the slope. So find <clears throat> the slope of f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. And I, I'm really, I, I'm hoping that you're saying, well, Charlie, obviously the slope is 2. I, I, I took algebra. I get this. It, and I'm going to look at this value right here and say, well, this is the slope value right here. And that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that you're looking at that going, that is the slope. Why do I need to do this? The, the answer to your question of why bother with this is this will be a great way to prove through calculus, what you already know algebraically. So let's set this up using this model right here. So we're going to just use this part right here. We're going to say is the limit as the change in x approaches 0. And professors are really, really tough about this. They really want this done just the way they want this done. And this should work out like this, shouldn't it? It should work out that we get. I'm, I'm using this right now. I'm going to plug this in. So here's the 2, and that's this f value here of x plus change in x. Um, the reason I'm not using c is because I'm, I want a general solution. I want the derivative anywhere. Uh, 2x plus change of x, right, minus 3, right? And then it says here that we should take this piece away, right? So this negative sign is this one right here. And minus f of x, and f of x is 2x minus 3, isn't it? All over the change in x, and I'm getting that from here. <coughs> I'm going to simplify, distribute a little bit, simplify, and we get 2x plus 2 changes of x, right, minus 3, I'm going to distribute here, minus 2x plus 3 all over the change of x, right? I'm, just, I'm still in the limit process. I'm going to do this. Uh, what we want is this change of x to go to 0. We, we're saying making really, really small moves towards uh, where x changes just a tiny bit. What's the derivative here? So let's cancel stuff out that we can cancel. And we can cancel out 2x cancels 2x, doesn't it, here? And 3, negative 3 and 3 cancel each other, don't they? So now we have the limit as the change of x approaches 0 of 2 changes of x over change of x. Well, change of x over change of x is 1, so we know that that f prime at x, the derivative, is equal to 2. That is, the slope is 2. But you knew that when you started, right? We talked about that. You said algebra 1, algebra 2, I already, I already knew that was true. So that was a really, really simple example. Intentionally, because it gets much more difficult and it becomes less intrinsic, and you have to start to really trust what you're doing. So let's try one. Um, we're at four minutes. Let's let's try one. Let's try a difficult one and see what happens. If you can do this, you're in great shape. It, some of this, well, you'll see. Let's just do this. So find the derivative. Find the derivative. Derivative. And let's let f of x, f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x. Now, I I don't know if you can see this or not. If you don't know any of the rules of calculus yet, this will not be obvious at all. And, and then in two or three weeks, you'll be furious at me and at your professor for not telling you the secret before. 
So all I'm going to do is set that thing up that we had before, right? And it said, right, that we're going to use f of x plus change in x minus f of x all over the change in x. And we're going to say that is the limit. So I'm not even going to bother that. But this is what I'm filling in the blanks on. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to say it's the, right, f prime at x equals the limit the change in x goes to zero of this thing. So I don't need to write this f prime at x thing again, but I do need to write this. So it equals the limit as the change in x approaches zero of, well, f of x is x cubed. So x plus change in x cubed, right? Plus, look, whoops, cubed, sorry, cubed, plus two. This two is this two, x plus change in x. Minus, now I'm going to do this, minus f of x, and we know that f of x is x cubed, my, oh, I'm sorry, plus 2x, I have to be really careful to keep that together, all over change in x. So all I did here was fit, all I did here was fit, all I did was fill in the blanks. That's it. Now we're going to get to some algebra, and this is where we get killed on the algebra part. If you know, if you can do your binomial expansion of this, that's great, but for the sake of time, it's x cubed, isn't it? plus 3x squared, change of x squared, oh, it's, I'm sorry, just change of x, sorry, plus 3x, change of x squared, plus change of x cubed. This makes sense because in binomial expansion, we know that we're going to get one more term than this. We have one, two, three, four terms. That works out good. Now, if you don't mind, we're going to do, we want to work on this part. I'm going to distribute this to here and to here, and that would give us plus 2x plus 2 changes of x, right? And if you don't mind, I'm going to distribute here to here and here, and that will give us minus x cubed minus 2x, isn't that right? So this is the this is the x cubed part right here. Let's see where we are for time. How are we doing here? We're at 7 minutes. We're doing good. Okay, so look, this is this part right here, isn't it? This is this part right. This is this part right here, and let's just make sure we're clear about where we are. This is all this stuff here. All right. So we're putting it back together, and this change of x, guys, is this one right here. Is that okay? And then remember, your professors they go crazy if you don't continue to carry on this limit process notation stuff. So what are we going to do now? We're going to cancel. We're going to have this thing done in a minute and 25 seconds. Uh, so let's see what we get here. Let's see what we can cancel just doing some algebra. So we're going to cancel stuff out. x cubed and negative x cubed. Uh, positive 2x and negative 2x. Isn't that right? I think that's right, isn't it? Now, if you'll look, this is really, really important because what we want to do is we want to set this change of x to 0. But we can't because if we do, our function will go undefined. But if you look in all these p all these terms here, change of x, change of x, change of x, change of x, we're going to be able to factor out a change of x. So we're going to factor now. So it's still the limit as the change in x goes to zero, right? We're going to factor out these change of as many as much of change of x as we can, and we can factor out one change of x. But hopefully you'll see in a second what's going to happen. So this becomes three x squared here, doesn't it? This times this gives us that plus 3x change of x, because this times this gives us that back, doesn't it? Plus change of x squared, right? Plus 2, plus 2, because this times this gives us this piece back. I'm just hoping you're following the algebra with me. And I'm trying to keep my commitment to you, which is that in the next 45 seconds we finish this. But look at the good news here, you guys. I told you before. In a perfect world, we can set change of x to 0. We can't yet, but look what happens here. We have this change of x here as a factor, and we have a factor of change of x here, and we can factor out factors. Be careful about trying to cancel terms. Terms don't cancel, factors do. So these cancel, they go to 1. So now we have the limit as the change in x goes to 0 of 3x squared plus 3x change of x plus x change of x squared plus two and look what happens here is there any we couldn't let change of x go to zero here because if we did the function would become undefined 
But what happens if we let it equal 0 here? So let change of x equal 0. And look what would happen. We'd have 3x times 0. We'd have 0 squared. So what would happen? We'd have 3x squared plus 2 is f prime at x. And we did a good job on that. I hope that helped you guys. I, I really do. Um, let me just tell you this. If you keep after this, if you keep working on this, you're going to get really, really good at it. And as you do, as nerdy as it sounds, it actually becomes kind of fun because it's kind of a cool puzzle to take apart and put back together. You have to fight your way through the frustration. And remember, it's not the calculus that's getting you. It's the algebra. So don't give up. You can definitely do this. I promise. Go Terps.